All right. So that's like the, the edit point. Okay. Um, so for just a, a little bit extra time, do you have any, um, do you have any stories in mind you can, or, um, any, um, story? well, I, I, have I, a mean, really I guess if you, story. if you do. Yeah. It's one of my favorite stories. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and it's a funny cause it's a mix of my, my job and Bigfoot all in the same thing. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that's often. awesome. Yeah. So uh, this was in August of 2003. This is a month yeah. before I give my first talk. And part of what we do in the Forest Service is we have a program that's called Passports in Time. And it allows um, the public to come be archaeologists or historians for, you know, a week or whatever it is that you, you time it for. And it's all volunteer. We don't charge anybody anything, but like sometimes you'll uh, record rock art or sometimes we, one time we use metal detectors to try to find an original pioneer immigrant trail that came over oh, cool. the path. So they can be lots of fun. And we've done, done many, uh, many, many, many of them. And so that year um, we were doing something called um, uh, Arbor Glyphs mm. in Barn Meadow. And so this was an attempt uh, to record Basque tree carvings on aspens in this meadow. And so uh, it, it was up in the mountains. We were in a campground, but we had shut the campground down to everybody else. It was just us and our volunteers. Okay. And we were there for uh, four days and three nights. And we're uh, my, at least three of my district archaeologists. So those are the, my they're not really my, they're not my employees, but they're the people who do the field work for archaeology. And three of the four were there to help supervise the volunteers because we broke them up into groups and each of us would take, you know, three or four volunteers and then record this tree. And then the other team was recording that tree and, you know, back and forth because those things are not fun to record. Sure. And we're having a great time. So the first night, I believe, I believe, although I can't really remember, but I believe it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Friday, we all, uh, the archaeologists, we were kind of all on one part of the campground and the volunteers, we let them social, um, you know, get to know each other socially in another part. So we're, we're kind of sort of at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, you know, it's a nice campground. Uh, it's a Niagara um, OHV campground, if anybody wants to know. Okay. And, but none of us are really super close. So I'm, I'm here, m one of my arcs, Steve, is closer to the creek. Aaron's over here, then Lisa's over there, you know, kind of, but we're fairly close. And so we go to bed Friday night, the next morning, I mean, that was Thursday night, we go to bed Thursday night. And the next morning, um, my archaeologist, Steve, um, comes up to me and he kind of pulls me away and he goes, Kathy, there was something in that creek last night. It was Whoa. moving boulders. And I was like, really? And I said, well, that's odd. And I said, did you hear, you know, a bell? Because all our cows, be, cows graze on national forest lands, but okay. they wear bells. And I said, I, you know, I certainly didn't hear anything and uh, any bells. He didn't hear anything. And I said, and that would be pretty odd that it was pitch black and cows are out moving around in a dry creek. Mm. And so I said, did you go over there and look to see if you see any prints, you know, any cow prints? And he goes, yeah, I looked, went over there and looked and I didn't see anything. And I said, well, maybe it was further away. Um, from us and we thought or whatever and I said but I you know I don't think somebody is going to harass us by moving rocks in a creek bed you know and I said so I don't think we're in any danger so we're going to continue on and so he goes all right all right so we go about our day had a really super nice night I mean uh, evening and, and stuff and so I go to bed and then this is uh, Friday night and so it, it was probably two or so in the morning okay. and I start hearing something walking and it's getting closer and closer to my tent. And the next thing I know, I see five fingers at the top of my, <laughs> I, I knew it was getting close. So I had put my head back there to yeah. look. I see five fingers at the top of my tent and it goes all the way oh, down. And I no. said, Lisa, Lisa, is that you? And nothing, I didn't hear anything. And so I'm like going, what the hell is going on? Somebody's messing mm. with me. So I get out of my sleeping bag, unzip my tent, get mm -hmm. a flashlight and tr go, you know, around my tent and go, ha, gotcha. Nothing there. And I went, oh, we're playing games. Now. 
So now I go around to the other side of my tent and go, oh, I got you. There's nothing there. And I'm like, God, oh, okay, I just, I just had a nightmare of some sort. And I'm like, well, I'm right awake. Why would I get out of my bed mm-hmm. for a dream? And I'm just going, oh, you know, I'm frustrated. So I get back into my, get it back in my tent, zip it up, just had laid down, but hadn't zipped up my uh, sleeping bag yet. And then I hear a bam right outside my, my tent. And I realized whatever it was, was in the tree above my tent. And I'm like, crap, you know, because it was obviously two feet landing hard. Mm. So I then can hear it starting to move off because I can hear pebbles rolling down. There was some boulders there that the, the pebbles are kind of skeeting down okay. and I'm just like, Oh my God, what, what is going on? And so now I'm just terrified and I couldn't go back to sleep. It finally starts raining drizzling and it's very common for there to be uh, rain in the Sierras in the, in the summer it happens all the time. Sure. And I gave me a little bit of relief because at least I can't hear anything because you're spending all the rest of the night going, what's that noise? What's that noise? <laughs> and so, um, I finally, in the morning when it got light, I could hear people stirring. So I got out of my tent and we're talking a little bit, you know, but I hadn't really, really processed what had happened. And then next thing I know, here comes Lisa and she's barreling at me just like this. She get, And she gets up to me. She goes, I just want you to know, I didn't think what you did last night was funny. And I Boy. said, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything. And she goes, you didn't do anything. And I said, no. And she goes, you didn't stand outside my tent and go, Lisa. Lisa. And I went, nope, I didn't. And so we talked about what had happened to me and I'm going, I don't know what's going on here, you know, but oh, you know, boy. we only got one more night to go. We got a professor from UNR Reno coming to help us with interpret the, the Basque language that were written on the train. I said, we can't, we can't bail. We can't bail on these people. Oh, and so, um, Anyway, th- nothing else happened after that. That was the only Oof. thing that happened. And so it was it was probably one of the strangest things that ever happened to me. And of course, even then, even though I was a Bigfooter, I did not attribute that to Bigfoot at first. I, I didn't know what to think, you know, and I remember talking about it going, well, the only thing that has five fingers is us or, or a primate, and, you know, and I'm noodling it through. And, mm-hmm. and so we just end up figuring that what happened the first night with the boulders moving was also related and that wanted to know why we yeah. were there and why there were so few of us in the sense of that, that campgrounds normally got lots of loud people with ATVs in it. And, and that's the only thing I can think of, but anyway, that's, that happened. But, that, that's really like that's one of the best ones i've i've heard to be honest like that i would that would be a while before i go into the woods again after that like especially like the where they're saying lisa right outside your tent yeah. like how do you explain it how did you guys like how did you explain that away like the only thing i could I mean, ever think of is because i said lisa is that you lisa that it repeated that word that's it'd have to be it. yeah because you know, and it had to probably was watching us the entire time when, you know, didn't just happen to come through the campground like then. It probably was watching us and wondering what we were doing. But, but yeah, that's wow. the only thing we could figure. And then Lisa ended up t- telling me about, an, uh, she had had a scary um, counter. She always thought it was Bigfoot as well. Hmm. And something that was screaming at us and not very oh, in location. And so that's kind of the only explanation we ended up coming up with. So. Wow. So, but we did go back to that location that Bob and I would frequently Bigfoot in that general area. Oh, really? So, mm-hmm. Did anything else uh, happen there? And that was it. Not there. Yeah. yeah. All our other stuff um, was for lower in elevation. That was pretty high. And it, you know, we, he spent, he spent one whole summer camping uh, out there um, in that general location and never ended up having anything happen. And so oh, really? it always kind of felt like, like they move through this particular area in, in a, in a way that we don't yet understand. And that's, that's kind of why we like area X is because we've been there so long, documented it so long that if you read the tag seven paper, we've kind of figured out what season they come through the area. And the Sierras of course is 55 billion times bigger than, than that area. And so it's a little harder to predict at this point. Plus we haven't had enough people in the field to, to observe that kind of data. 
Right. Oh man, that is so cool. That is so cool. Thank you for that extra story. That was really cool. No That's very awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. Um, well, I hope that uh, I'm sure our paths will uh, cross uh, in the future again sometime, but uh, thank you so much for sharing all your stories tonight. Um, thank you. This has been super you. duper fun, but yeah, have a great rest of your night and uh, thank you again. Great. Thank you.